السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على I don't like these places I like to be near to people so that I can feel the heat so we can work together and have some productivity what I'm going to be talking today about is uh, maybe the story of uh, my country the story of a desert and going from the big Let's, I, I, I'm flipping the pyramid so that the big thing is in the top, then going down and deep, what I'm going to be talking about, what I'm doing with my research team in our beautiful university. So we're talking about lessons learned in sustainable agriculture. And all of you, you know that we can't uh, have agriculture continuously unless we optimize, as we say, inputs, and hopefully maximize outputs in a way that we won't harm the environment and we benefit humans. So what we're going to be talking about, I think it's off, all right, is what is Saudi Arabia? Most people, uh, when they say, where are you from? I say from Mecca. Or I say I'm from the holiest city, which I'm not from. But I'm from the country that has Mecca. So Mecca is uh, uh, the one in uh, maybe here to the left, here to the left, for those who don't know that, and then Medina, to the one to the right, these are the two biggest mosques in the world, and then Jerusalem is the third biggest mosque. They will take more than two million people at one time, and it is now happening to be at least four or five levels. It's so huge that the new area in the back here, if you can see it, it's complete, completely as large as the Haram now, for those who know Haram. And the same thing is happening to Medina Mosque. Now, most people think that Saudi Arabia is a camel and sand. Right? Well, it's right. We drink camel milk, we drink camel urine mixed with milk, and science proved now that it will attack uh, cancer cells. And there is a lady, very famous doctor uh, in Jeddah, King Abdelaziz University, she made this new paste where it's from urine and the milk. You can put it in cuts, it's going to heal you. But you can see it's raining in the same sandy desert. All right? And then the same sandy desert we used to build our buildings a long time ago, but no, no more. And we enjoy the sand with our very expensive cars. Not all of us, of course, just some of us. Now, this is the Saudi Arabia now that had the sand on the bottom, and we are competing with American uh, cities. You won't feel that you are in Arabia. You are in maybe Los Angeles or Chicago, if you're uh, familiar, with the highways and the high rises, and the seas everywhere. Now, you can't believe that we have snow too. We have sometimes up north, we have hail in the summer, all over the kingdom, you will lose your windshield, your car is gonna be damaged. If you get the, if you are in the right time for the nice orange shade sometimes, uh, hail. But this is real snow, and these are oceans, uh, the Red Sea, and you can see how green is our land. This is the mountainous area in the western part of Saudi Arabia. An example of universities that are there in Saudi Arabia, my university to the right, King Saudi University, the only, I think, I'm not sure, the largest woman university in the world, Princess uh, Noura bint Abdurrahman, the sister of King Abdulaziz, the founder of Saudi Arabia. And then you know Kaus. This is Kaus, where they actually build it on the sea. There is a project going on now, it's an initiative, part of the objectives that are a component of the strategy of the new 2030 of Saudi Arabia, that Prince Mohammed bin Salman is really pushing. And you will hear a lot of things in these coming days. We have King Abdullah uh, money city that will be launched in 2018. We're going to have a lot of rich people coming and investing and not only selling us stuff. So this, the greening of desert project consists of increasing the vegetative cover of Saudi deserts, restored biodiversity and ecological equilibrium. And this is going to be through taking care of, tree, taking care of trees, shrubs, and grazing plants. 
And this is for the betterment of environment. And let us remember that 160,000 years, the Arabian Peninsula was greener than Indonesia. And the water that we, in the aquifers that we have now, it is from that era. And I'm talking about 1,000, 1,700 uh, meters uh, below the underground, or uh, below ground. And that's the water that mostly we are using for big, big, big businesses and big needs of the government. The greening is trying to take care of natural resources, rehabilitation of national parks, management of national grazing land, development of seashore green cover. Can you believe that we are one of the competitive shrimp uh, uh, exporters in the world now? where we have our own naturally living shrimps from the Red Sea. The water comes in and goes naturally. And we have very high production rates. And then uh, these vegetation structures in Saudi Arabia are consist of many things. For example, mangrove forests in Jezan area. We have the best mangrove areas. You, are, you think you are in Indonesia. Savannah swamps. I mean, you think, what, desert land has savannah swamps? Yes, we do. You'll be amazed. I'll try to give you some pictures. Salim swamps, near waters, near, near, near seas, uh, on the both sides. Dry land vegetation, mountain, wood trees, and animal plants. What is the solution that's going to be followed to succeed in this initiative? Is to do forest land development. And now it's going on. From last month, they have started the project of planting four million plants. In my own village, they planted last uh, uh, month 4,000 trees. They are acacia trees by companies, individuals from the society and the Ministry of Agriculture. Rain harvesting through dams and underground cavities, very seriously done. We have some of the biggest uh, dams in the area at least and mountain leveling for farming. You have it like, like, like the way you have. Because some of our uh, mountains are so steep that we have to make this artificial farm so that they will sustain the mountain and then you can farm something for the farmers. So they won't really kill the trees uh, as much as possible. And then grazing land development, we're controlling through this initiative how much in animals should be there and then implementation of city green uh, belts. They are crazy now planting uh, uh, plants all over the cities or around the cities and inside the cities. And development of sewage water usages. I'm not sure about the figure, but it might be at least 30 to 40%, if not more in the city, if not all, are water with sewage, uh, treated sewage water and then farming with seawater, as I mentioned before. Now, I'll, let me give you something. What is Saudi Arabia? What does it look like? So this is the map, right? The topography is sand, right? But some sand are changing. And then they have some mountains with some trees. And then some real better vegetation and some trees. And then green land. All of this is in Saudi Arabia. Topography again. You can see here, if you, if, you, if you concentrate, this is all sand. Every, the empty quarter and all of this line is sand. And you know what? The best dates are produced in sand. Yellow, golden, and healthy. If you go in detail, you can see what I'm talking about, the sand area. But all of these are, uh, this is, these are the mountainous area in the west part of Saudi Arabia. Jazan here, near Yemen, where the war is hopefully it's going to stop. It's just like you are in Indonesia. Soil, lots of studies have been covering all the country to find out what's going on of the soil activity there. So, what is desert? Yes, this is desert. We have issues. We want water, we want to green it, and we want to support modern, mod modern um, watering systems. But what happened really here is a transformation against all odds. The sand with some satellite imaging of some part of that sand. We don't know what they are, but actually they are 
lot of land of agriculture in this place. And most of these farmings are using the aquifer water, as I mentioned before. Date palms, olives are one of the main cultivated crops in the oasis of Saudi Arabia. Date palm nearly all over the country, specifically Riyadh area, which is the middle, Ahsa area, which is near Bahrain, Al Qasim area, which is a little bit north of Riyadh, and then most, if not all, the olives are in the northern part of Saudi Arabia. And we are competing with prizes in Italy and Spain, competitions of olive oil that we have the best. Even Jordanians and Palestinians, sometimes we uh, beat them. So, what's going on? Uh, is it enough for us, the food? The imports tells us that we still do a lot of imports from other countries, but we are not aiming to really make everything because water is so expensive. In Saudi Arabia, oil is cheaper than water. Water is more expensive than oil. Okay, so, so we really have to take care of, of water. I'm just going to give you some figures very fast about agriculture and the national economy. What are we planting in numbers? To the left, you will see the estimated production in tons, and on the right, you will see the estimated production area, the planted. You can figure out the numbers, but you know that cereals are, and vegetables, and fodder plants, and fruits are the most important things that we are doing. Uh, vegetables, we still import cereals. In, in wheat, we don't import. <coughs> Barley, we import, for example. Fodder, we used to not import. Now the government says we should stop fodder because it consumes a lot of water. Go plant somewhere else. And Saudis now are planting in Sudan, planting in South America, planting, planting in a uh, lot of countries. Maybe they will, if you allow them, they will come here and plant. Uh, really, because it's cheaper than doing it in Saudi Arabia. <coughs> now, what are our fruits? You can see, the most important fruit is what? Kurma, right? Am I saying it right? Kurma, dates. This is the most important commodity in Saudi Arabia to the left. Then citrus, grapes, and others. Now, what is kurma? What is date palms? I think you know the history of it and all the information, right? But, but basically, date palms are, have originated from our area, either Iraq or northern Saudi Arabia. That's what I wanted to get from this uh, page. And then over 34 years, you can see from the 1983 up to last year, the production in tons of dates and area-wise, that it is, <coughs> the line is increasing. You can see some years that the production in tons is less than the area, and you can see that there is some kind of advancements that the production is higher than the area, which means that there is some kind of mechanization that is making things better, and we hope to make it even better and better. These are the most important things that actually, and we will be successful, through the Gajah Maja University, which I really thank them for this invitation and all the stuff here, that you will be selling the Saudi dates to Indonesia through the company owned by Gajah Maja, hopefully. We are finalizing this issue where we will not sell you the low quality dates anymore that the traders are bringing to Indonesia and claiming that it's from Saudi Arabia or anywhere else. We will say that there is minimum standard that we, sh we can uh, export to you, and you should take care of educating people the importance of dates and why you should, instead of this cheap thing that you can see and open without packaging, you should look at the ajwa, the middle and high quality, and Muslims all know ajwa. It's the most expensive dates in Saudi Arabia. A kilo can get to 500 riyal. The excellent, excellent kilo, which is about what? One million and a half uh, rubia for one kilo, and maybe more, okay? Uh, Sukkari is, is a competitive variety. Sagi is so beautiful, but most people don't know about these things, okay? And then Berhi, you guys are planting Berhi here. You have at least 1,000 
barhi uh, plants around this area that maybe in seven years you will eat barhi from here. I'm not sure, but I hope. Khlas is one of the delicacies of Saudi Arabia. When I mean khlas, the soft one, the yellow one, it's even greater in taste than chocolate, than anything you can imagine. Uh, <coughs> khudri is a competitor of majdul, if you know majdul, all right? And then all these baskets and all of these chocolates and almonds and whatever that they're, they're doing now. If you had a chance to go to Hajj or Umrah, you will see that. These are some of the manufacturing. Now, this date palm, which is the most important fruit in Saudi Arabia, has problems. Pests. The most important pest is red palm weevil. Fortunately, you don't have it, but you have its cousins. You have the species, the genus, Brinkiforest, but you don't have Phrygenus. Although I will show you in papers that someone said, Brinkiforest Phrygenus is here. My student, who is Dr. Sekerno here, he did the survey of most of the islands, he did not find Rinkoforest Phrygenus. Uh, but it's the same mistake they've done in California in 2010 when they said they have the red palm weevil, and it was, it was not Rinkoforest Phrygenus, but it was Rinkoforest Volnitalis, and they said that maybe an Indonesian brought the lava that are alive and buried them in his house in California, then adults came and then they went to the orange. That's what they claim, anyway. Because I know that Indonesians, Filipinos, they eat these drugs. I know that sago plants are left for some time to make eight kilos of larva per cubic meter. Am I right? Well, that's what I heard from Sikemba. Anyway, so this problem is really big in all over the world. Europe is pulling hair. The Rivera is having a big problem. The French is seriously thinking to eliminate all palms and start again or have something else because of the danger of fallen trees and killing people. One lady was killed, I think, in Spain, maybe two years ago. So, where is the distribution of the palm weevil? The publication said Indonesia. And I want someone to prove that. But it is also in Saudi Arabia and it is in all of these countries. They say, uh, what, how many countries they record? I don't know, 26, 43? But it's a lot. This is it. This is the juicy, juicy lava. It's really juicy. You know, if you fry it, it's even better than caterpillars. Caterpillars are moths, right? Uh, but it's a big devastation. It will drop the plant within six months if nothing is, is done. So here we can see the research worldwide on red palm weevil as an example. Uh, you can see that Saudi Arabia is number two after India with 98 published work. But Indonesia, three published work. Malaysia, six published work, just for you, sir. I mentioned that. Now, I don't think you don't have red palm weevil. Malaysia, they have it. But you know what? If you're not careful, you will have it. Now, these are the many subjects that has been covered on these publications from biology up to molecular studies. Everybody's active. This is an active site of research now that I encourage anyone who is interested to work on. And then there is an example of successful management using the integrated pest management uh, system to manage the red palm weevil in one of the farms in India in 1989, where it took the farmers 12 years to get rid of the red palm weevil. In the Canary Islands, it took them six years to get rid of the red palm weevil out of the Canary Islands. <coughs> My challenge, our challenge is connecting. And we have started connecting with farmers, actually, of date palms. And some active people in the University of Gajamaja, department head here, and Dr. Amy, and then some beautiful uh, 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 people who are dealing with dates. We need to be connected. Through what? Through our ERO, uh, uh, Economic Entomology Research Unit, where this is our group, and we are very happy to have Dr. Sikerno and Dr. Allen as graduates 2017 and 2016 from our team. Foreign collaboration, we are collaborating with Japan, UK, UK, Pakistan, USA, USA, Germany, 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 
we have this missing thing here called the University of Gajamaja in Indonesia. We need a name or names, okay? And I'm serious. All right, thank you very much. This is our King Salman. Thank you very much. Oh.